Right on the chili. What do you think of that? I mean, I think it looks pretty slick, but. I gotta go take a break. Oh, you just oh, finish the welds oh, up. I can't do it. I'm not grinding this I, thing. I, I gotta call. Unbelievable. Welcome back into the channel, everyone. Today, I think we can all agree on one thing. We all love to weld, mm -hmm. and we all hate to grind. Absolutely hate to grind. Well, there's a couple weirdos out there that love to grind. I'm sure but there is. That's, that's not that's us. That's not for me. When it comes to production and having to do the same thing every single day, I'd rather the robot do it. Yeah, I got carpal tunnel. After slapping together this move bumper kit, we're gonna grind it all down today here at the Push Corp Demo Lab with one of these robots. Now you've all seen these robots before. Robots, cobots, so be it. We don't really wanna talk about that. We wanna focus more on this unit right on the end of it. I've got Ryan here from Push Corp to help give us more information. Every welder's favorite job, without a doubt, is grinding down the welds after, right? <laughs> what this PushCorp GrindX system and really the PushCorp equipment allows the robot to do is replicate a lot of those natural human movements that a robot couldn't do otherwise if it didn't have this type of equipment. So we got kind of two main pieces here. One is the spindle. You can imagine that this is a spindle that replicates the angle grinder. But the output power of a DC servo motor from PushCorp is a lot more than your standard angle grinder and you're gonna be able to use a lot larger abrasives, power larger abrasives for a longer period of time. And then the real magic happens in this box here. Because a robot doesn't know how much force it's putting on there. Exactly, you tell a robot to go from A to B and it's gonna go from A to B, kind of like a CNC machine. But if you hit a weld that's you know maybe not so consistent all the way through, not the case with your welds, if it was my welds, where you could have some bumps and deviation that you want to be able to accommodate and compensate for so you're not digging through and gouging through your material. In this magic box here, we call it our AFD, or Adjustable Force Device. And that kind of allows the robot to replicate the movements of human arms and joints to be able to move up and down on a material, as well as exert a constant force when it's in contact with the workpiece. Okay, so it basically is like an, adding like a nervous system to your robot. Essentially, yes. Yeah, you okay. want it to be able to take a little deviation part to part. Maybe it's something coming out and being assembled automatically, but it's not always perfect. Well, you want the robot to be able to deviate, you know, a few millimeters part to part. And you also want it to be able to have a constant finish. You don't sure. want burn marks. You don't want it missing parts here. Yeah. You want it to be consistent process. So, you know, every time this bumper shows up in front of the robot, it's the same robotic process to knock this weld down. And it's hard to get consistency with good help these days. Not only that, but no one's paying any grinder, any helper a good wage that want to sit here and grind welds all day, every day. This is a, a great solution for any small, medium manufacturer, even big, when it comes to laying down production and keeping from bottlenecking because you got welders welding away, but they get to the getting to the grinding part and it's just slowing things down. That's right. Usually we see it where there's no real problem getting the parts welded together. But it's when you got a backlog of you know 10, 15, 20 parts, and your welders want to keep welding, right? Right. And that's where it uh, that's where it can definitely slow down. And you can go real heavy duty systems if you're really knocking off huge, huge welds. We've also got smaller form factor systems that can work on small industrial robots or cobots for lighter duty welding grinding. And as far as safety goes, you don't have to worry about any safety except staying out of the way of the robot. That's right. I mean, the robot, it's still abrasives, it's still tooling, whatever. It's gonna throw sparks, but you as an individual, you don't need to worry about the safety glasses. You're not you know, wearing PPE, face shields, doing the grinding yourself. You're gonna be on the outside of an enclosure. The robot's taking all the risk on. And because of that, you can also throw on a lot bigger abrasive. I don't wanna run around with a nine inch grinder and a nine inch sanding disc or grinding wheel, but the robot doesn't care. I used to call nine inch air grinders oogas because of the way they, they, they sounded like <laughs> Dude, oh my God, you wanna talk parts. about jello arms at the end of the day? Yeah. And if you try and sit on that too hard, like you can hear the motors die. It's just not the same power you're and gonna I'm get a, from something like this. I'm 160 pounds wet wearing boots, man. I ain't trying to hog on welds all stinking day. I'd much rather, there you go. Let you do your welding and let this guy take care of knocking them all down after. Well, sick, let's see how the thing works. All right, so to make these welds disappear, how do we make this machine work for us? Essentially, we're gonna tell the robot where its cool center point is, or TCP. Once we know that, we can drive it around and create points on our welds. Then the robot will come through and connect the dots. We'll push into the compliance device with the robot, and that'll help us account for variations in the part height, or if our fixturing's not perfect, uh, can give us constant force. To tell it where to go, we gotta use this. What is this? So this is a teach pendant. You got your uh, X, Y, Z, and then also your rotations around X, Y, Z. So you can use that to drive the robot where you want it, record your points, and then you can step through them, do a continuous path, and then once you're ready to go, you, you hit go and let it rip. Takes no time at all, right? If you were just gonna grind one bumper, it would be faster just to grind it yourself. But if you have, to, if you have a lot of bumpers to grind, 
that's where it makes sense to spend the time up front programming and then it'll just do the same thing over and over again. Well, let's see this thing happen. Let's let it rip. This first pass is used to check our travel path and see if there are any points along the way we need to adjust a little bit. We can also see if the amount of pressure being put on the force compliance device is right for the speed and amount of weld we're trying to remove. All right, so we did our first pass and now we got to check it out. This is the first of these parts we have up on the table. We wrote our program. We kind of know ballpark from past projects where to set the parameters. So our RPM, our force, our travel speed across the park. We kind of give it our first go on this first pass. And now we go in and kind of read what's happening and make adjustments from there. For instance, on this, this weld, we're not quite getting down to parent material. We could change the RPM, we can change the feed rate, or we can add more force. I don't want to slow down the feed rate so it takes too long to grind the bumper. So we're going to add some more force on this next go around. Now that we've had a chance to see the results of the first pass, we dialed in the force to make sure we can hog through the remaining material. Once we had everything down to the base material, it was time to make these seams shine. This is looking a lot more like what we're looking for, but what do you think? We could keep running parts and keep dialing in those parameters till they're perfect, but we gotta get a, a tool change over to a non-woven disc to get this thing ready for paint. Let's change it up. Whenever you go to finish your work in general, it's best practice to keep all your grinding marks going in the same direction, and having a robot do it leaves you with super consistent grinds. So check it out, Shane. That looks pretty sharp. The robot took care of like all the dirty work. I would say it took care of about 98% of it. Okay, so as far as the other 2%, that means you still need an operator, one to operate the equipment and maybe to inspect the quality of the robot's work and maybe even touch up some of the spots that it might miss. Yeah, you got it. You know, this is something that used to take probably a couple hours for a grinder to come through and, and grind all of the uh, welds on every part of the bumper. Get the welds down, get the proper finish, the right lines. Exactly. Like some people love it. I don't think a lot of people love it. When it comes to the monotonous grinding yeah. over and over and over again, you know, that's where it really pays off. And you're gonna increase the manufacturer's throughput. Throughput, consistency, quality, and even help reduce the risk that uh, some of these people might have been in from doing this and doing it manually. We've got different pairings for different size jobs. This would probably be more of a medium duty job. You have a larger part, but we have a pairing that's appropriate for smaller jobs or if you have lighter duty welds. And then if you need to just hog off some serious metal, we got equipment that's, you know, gets pretty big. And if a customer wanted to have their part demoed so that they can see what automation is like, where do they go? So we've got our de-risking lab demo lab here in Dallas, Texas. We also have one in Montreal, Canada. So manufacturers can see what it looks like to get their part done using a robotic process. It's a great way to see the before and after and we support throughout that whole process. Where do I find you guys? If you go to pushcorp.com, you can see information about Pushcorp grind decks. You can also see information about our demo labs. We also have a great YouTube channel. And so if you check that out, we've got over 100 videos of applications of all kinds, grinding, sanding, finishing, polishing, drilling, milling, routing, you name it, we got it on there. Well, it looks slick, Shane. Thanks for having us. We'll see you guys on the next weld.